Hello, hello, hello. I am going to um, show you how I make um, some envelopes. Um, I'm not sure we'd call this a tutorial, more of a process kind of craft with me, I suppose. It's, it's adapting an idea I've shown you before. And there are a couple of things that I will show you today. Um, it, it started off, I was going to get this done first thing this morning, then I thought I'd just have a little practice and ended up making all day and um, only now got to do the video. So the first thing I'm going to very quickly show you is how I made my little glassine envelopes. Um, now there are hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of videos out there so by all means look at some others too because there are some really good tutorials out there. Crafty Sabby um, does a fantastic one. Michelle Scott has um, tutorials on making envelopes and there was one other person who I know has done them recently. I can't remember who that is. Anyway, I'm going to show you my my way. Um, I tried to make these with vellum and I found my vellum's quite quite thick and when you kind of bend it and and use your bone folder that's something I haven't got ready. Oh. Um, when you use your bone folder I found it split the vellum in places even if you were quite gentle. So um, I then so I'm just grabbing my bone folder. Never as prepared as you think. Um, I then tried with tracing paper and that wasn't great. So I have used this. Um, it's It says double-sided waxed, but it feels like there's only wax on one side. Um, it's food saver paper. I think in the US it might be your deli paper or butcher's paper, something like that. Um, it's not completely transparent but it's kind of translucent and this side is shiny and this is definitely waxed I don't know if the camera will pick that up but this side still feels quite papery and quite it's got a bit more of a rough surface so I've just cut out two pieces they're not equal and um, they're the same length because they came from the same same piece but um, I suppose what you need to do is decide how wide you want your envelope Double it and maybe add a centimetre is is what I would say do. Um, so I'm out of breath because I was gathering all my stuff um, to try and do this with you today. So, um, oh glue, oh yeah I've got my glue. This is, this is one of those pro projects that you can use as many materials or as few materials as you like. So I've got stuff everywhere. But you can guarantee I'm not going to have what I want. So basically what I do is this is very simple. <laughs> um, I don't do anything very technical. Um, I just fold it roughly a third of the way in um, and then I fold it again with I suppose there's about a centimetre and a half overlap here looking at this board. Oh, it has a. I've got to say something. I never do product reviews and things like that, but I bought this board recently and I love it for inking, for paint, for glue. Look at my lovely clean board, which it isn't usually compared to my other board. I've got that there to stop some glare from the light. Um, but I've got some happy mail to show, which the video for that will probably get done tomorrow. One of which is a beautiful image that I got from um, the lovely Gitty. Gitte, I know I'm going to say your name wrong and I apologise. Um, but we had this conversation about craft tools and this one is deadly. It's so dangerous if you plan on cutting because things slide everywhere. So if you've got a craft knife and a ruler, don't expect it to stay in the same place. Um, so I still use my my other mat for cutting because this is so dangerous. So the next thing I do, like I said, this is a very technical tutorial. I line it up. The other thing is my bracelets are going to drive you mad, aren't they? Line it up 
and this board it's the X cut um, and it's in centimetres which is why I bought it. I line up about two centimetres, take my bone folder and I just line that or fold that at two centimetres. The other side I do about a centimetre. So we've just got two folds. Oh, Eva from Bohemian Crafting. I think she does a tutorial for um, glassine envelopes. So then what I do is I just mitre both of those edges. And I've got two creases there. I'm not sure which one I'm supposed to be using. That one probably. And then I open that up. And then I just cut out the side sections. Now obviously it take a lot more time over this. This is this is me doing a tutorial, not me doing this properly. So this one I'm going to cut out the section again. Nothing ever goes right and straight when you're doing this on camera, does it? And that last section. And to keep this fairly simple, um, I take my large corner punch and I have the new crocodile on the way, yay! And I just round the corners of the flap. Now this is what happens. This is also what happens when you try and do it in the envelope punch board, which I have done some, but you then end up having to really kind of carefully cut round with a little pair of scissors. So we've now got our envelope shape. The other thing you could do is, I'm a big fan of templates, you could always make a template. Now, you can ink this now. Um, I find it's a bit more slippy and bendy if I ink it now, so I do glue mine first. So I fold over the top. I'm using a brand new glue for the tutorial because my other one, I'm just doing this all the time and I just thought that would drive everyone crazy. So just a really small bead of glue along the flap and it really doesn't need much and then what I do is I put a very small bead of glue not too close to the edge on this side and I run a small bead of glue along here and all the way up there and that will seal all of the edges. Now you could um, use a pair of decorative scissors if you wanted it as a bag. You don't have to have it as an envelope as a, with a flap. Um, there's lots of things you can do with these. You can make them all different sizes. Um, I've got a whole heap of things that I've made today to show you. Um, and you can see the envelopes made with this that I have used my envelope punch board for. Or you could use an envelope template that you've used cutting from a, an envelope that you've opened out. So there we have quite a nice little glassine style envelope. And I'm quite happy with that. I think it's a... It's a great idea if you've got time, I mean it takes two or three minutes to make one of these, you can cut them all in advance um, and it's so much cheaper than buying, buying these. Well the biggest thing for me is obviously the postage. So um, what I do is this is just one option, I will show you other options in a little while, is I'm just going to go round with my Distress Ink. I, I really like the effect of the Distress Ink. Um, 
I have tried to tea stain this and it's it's a, it is a bit like tracing paper it does go a little bit wrinkly and if you like that that's great this does go through the embossing machine um, but what I did was put um, I haven't got one to show you but I've done it in, a pre in previous journals and previous projects um, if I put this through the embossing machine I put a sheet of copier paper over the top and you do get um, some little tiny slits in the um, in the paper at certain areas but that doesn't bother me it's never um, interfered with the integrity of the of the paper I've used this for quite a lot of stuff actually it's it's quite versatile crafty Irina she's another one that does um, a tutorial on glassine envelopes I watched that a long time ago but it's still very good so now we've got our little glassine envelope ready to decorate however we want to um, I'm going to show you how to um, decorate this one and then I'm going to show you the new envelope that I've been working on so this is where um, I can't really tell you what you're going to need because you can use anything um, um, I've just pulled out a couple of bits of lace I haven't pulled out loads just to have a little look um, I'm not really sure where I'm going to go with this one so this is why I was saying it's kind of more of a process craft with me video than a tutorial the next bit is a bit more of a tutorial <laughs> um, I don't know I think I like this one but I don't like the colour so I'm going to do a little bit of inking on this just to take away some of that white obviously you can use tea stained lace this, these are just the first couple of pieces I pulled out of my drawer still not 100% sure I'm going to use it but yeah, that's definitely better you can use doily any um, doilies things like that so I'm not going to cut this exactly to size I'm just going to with my scissors that are absolutely covered in glue I have about 15 pairs but I happen to pick the pair with the glue on so we've got that um, I'm going to have a look for an image now I'm not sure if I'm going to use I think I might use something out here this is the um, my box full of the little bits that I've been fussy cutting um, so I'm just going to see if I can find something small enough in here small that might be a bit too wide that might be okay so pop that back there um, I'm just going to have a little fiddle and a little look really I think I like that and that shows up a little bit more doesn't it hmm. see that would look lovely on a little one wouldn't it yep I think I'm going to go for the yellow one so um, I never do leave these white because I'm not a big fan of too much white so I'm just going to very gently ink over the whole image and then go in with my ground espresso on the edge of that this weekend seems to have gone really really quickly but then I've spent all day to, well I, we took the kids out for a walk in the park much to their disgust and for lunch today just to get them out of the house for a couple of hours but apart from that I've been here making envelopes so I've got some cheesecloth that's been 
tea stained. I stopped using tick cheesecloth and now I'm kind of using it quite a lot again <laughs> and for these projects. So you don't have to cut very carefully or very neatly around this because it stretches and it frays and that's part of the beauty of cheesecloth isn't it. So it's quite nice. I'm not sure if I want any music paper or something on here. Um, I quite like simple on these, um, although saying that I've got one to show you in a bit, which is not quite so simple. Mm. And I think we'll go for the lace. So, I've also got some button. Oh, I'll have a look at the buttons in a minute. So basically, this takes hardly any glue at all. So. Ooh. See, that's the great thing about a glass mat. So I'm just going to plonk that down. I'm going to have it overhanging a little bit. This dries really quickly. So I'm going to turn that over and this is when I'm going to trim off the excess. And obviously you want to be really careful you don't cut the envelope or you have a lovely hole at the bottom. I hope I'm in frame. Let me check. Yeah. Cool. So, um, to stick the cheesecloth, I just put a random, ooh, random piece of glue down. And once we've got the image glued, it will actually glue through and it will, will hold down the cheesecloth in the areas that it's not got any glue on now. So, um, I mean I've sewn some so I've got I've got lots to show you um, that I've been doing today so lots of other options I just thought we'd kind of do one together if that's okay with you and I'm gonna pop that down. Now we could trim out some of this. I quite like it hanging over the edge, so I'm not going to trim too much. And I actually like to pull pull some of it, so you don't need to cut it all. Yep, I'm happy with that, but I still think it needs a little something. So I've got a couple of jars of buttons. I'm not sure if we want something quite plain or whether we want something with some colour. Quite like that. Well, that's quite nice. Got a little button. Um, might pop a little bit more cheesecloth under there just with some of this scrap. Just so we've got a little bit on top of the. Give that a bit of a layer. Now I might come back and do something else to this. In a bit when I show you what I've been working on. Those of you that follow me on Instagram will know um, what I've kind of been practicing with and, and playing with. There we go. There's another little bit under there. So I'm gonna for now I'm just gonna move this out of the way. 
I'm just going to ink up the edge. I mean, these are great fun because you can just you can just play and play and do so many things with these. Just going to ink up the edge with the ground espresso. And probably should have done this before I stuck this down. But that is a pretty basic but effective um, little envelope. I might, like I said, I might we might come back to this when I show you um, what I have um, been playing with. Um, I'm just going to show you the second thing we're going to have a little go at. And I'm going to show you the two that I put onto Instagram, not the ones that I've been working on. So I took my hangy tag um, idea and I've made some hangy tag envelopes. Um, I've used a wax seal to hold down the, um, the kind of jute twine. Um, there's two different ways that I've hung these. This one has got the two holes and it's threaded three. This one's just got the one. Um, but I'm going to show you a couple of alternatives because I know not everybody has these and I know not everybody is confident enough to use them. I'm certainly not an expert. I've had these for quite a long time. Um, and the one thing I would say is all you need is time and practice. That's it. It just takes some practice. There's, there's no, there's no kind of rules because different waxes will take different um, amounts of time for the for the for it to set and other waxes um, they have a completely different texture than other waxes um, so you just need to practice that's that's my advice but I'm going to show you alternative ways that we can do this without using a wax seal so these are um, the little envelopes I'm going to show you how um, I made these. This one has been stitched. I've got a couple more to show you that I've I've stitched, but we're probably I'm not going to do any stitching today because I've spent so long um, making envelopes instead of making this tutorial, which is what I should have been doing today. So um, just lean over here. The first one I'm just going to use um, a craft envelope, the same as I used for the other two. So um, it's a plain a plain envelope that's it simple as that so what I'm going to do is um, sorry my bracelet's driving me crazy so it must be driving you crazy um, this was cleaned it's not the right colour but um, my my pad kind of disintegrated and I ordered some it was quite funny I ordered some thinking they were really cheap from eBay which they were they were really cheap it said the mini, mini ink pads um, but I got these <laughs> a little bit too small um, that was another one of my little crafting disasters this week um, I've done several different techniques for um, these envelopes I'm just going to do the straightforward um, inking around the edges and then I'll do a little bit more on the inside some of them what I've done is I have inked then I have sprayed with water some of them I have rubbed the Distress Oxide, the one and only colour I have, which is the Vintage Photo. Um, I've inked up my board, um, sprayed that with water, and then I have um, dipped the envelope into it, which worked out absolutely brilliantly um, for some of the envelopes, but not for all of them, and I'll show you those in a bit. So this envelope is already quite dark. It's not. It's not making um, a massive difference, probably that you can see on the camera, but it is. It is distressing it a little bit. So that's quite good. That's what I'm looking for. And obviously, I'm going to do the back. I'm hoping this is not going to end up being a really long video for you guys. So I'm probably not going to do the most elaborate embellishments on these. 
but like I said, I've got lots of ideas to show you that you can you can try out. So that's part one, and of course I'm going to go in with my ground espresso. And I've got to thank Abby for this from Purple Cottage Crafts because um, I saw her little snippets tutorial, so I had to purchase this one, which I think it originally doubled my distress ink collection. <laughs> Although I did realise I had um, the antique paper, which I must have bought a very long time ago and didn't realise I had it. And since then I've bought a tiny mini one, um, which is certainly not the kind of colour I ever worn lipstick apparently. So I now own four distress inks. <clears throat> so it's amazing what you can do with such a small amount of <laughs> supplies. So we've got our envelope. Um, now it's a kind of what are we going to do with it? How are we going to decorate this? Um, you know I love my nature. So um, it's quite possible we'll end up with a kind of nature themed envelope. I've still got this little piece of, oh that's quite a good length actually. So I'm just going to, just going to collage, just see what happens. Um, and then we're going to do the, the hangy tag piece. So that's obviously the bit that we're here for. So I'm not going to bore you too much with my thinking and deciding and I'm going to try and do this for you as quick as I can. Da, da, da. Do you know how much time I spend in a day putting lids on and off distress inks? That's amazing isn't it? And redoing things. I don't know if anyone saw on Instagram yesterday. I was so pleased with this little tag that I had made um, with some Tim Holtz Warflower Vellum and a little Tim Holtz Robin. He was so cute. And then I went and put a hole through his head because I <laughs> I used the wrong hole on my big bite. <laughs> so I felt quite sorry for the little Robin. Um, and myself because, um, let me just check that's not glaring. Sorry about that. Um, so we've got we've got that. That's all we've got so far. Um, got some piece of scrap tea stained paper. That's probably quite wide. Mm, how thick we want this. I quite like it that it's not the same. Yeah, I liked it so it wasn't the same. Now I've made it virtually parallel all the way along. Okay, so we've got a bit of this, bit of that. Um, I don't know if I want any of this yet. Um, I might add an image to this one. Let's have a look. What have I got? Um, I've got this little kind of box of images that I've printed and not not used in other projects. Um, yeah. See, well maybe I should have planned rather than do this as a let's do this kind of together. Oh, what have we got? I think these are these are Miss Mrs. Cog images. I feel like that one has to go over this side. If we use that. Yeah, something a bit small. Oh, there's something else here. Oh. What else is there? That's a bit wide, isn't it? 
Well, this might be 